What is up everyone? It's me, the Pokemon Cape. We're actually recording both video and this podcast for Spotify, Apple, Google, you name it. So this is actually technically the start of season four. Woohoo! Um, this is actually, there was a, an episode last week if you uh, have listened. However, that wasn't actually new content. That's actually season one, episode one. Uh, something weird kind of happened with the recording. Uh, so back then I was with another um, podcast platform company. Basically, if you had music at the start of your podcast or any, or anywhere in your, uh, in your podcast, they would only allow it to be on Spotify due to licensing stuff with Spotify uh, and lack thereof with Apple and so on and so forth. So episode one of season one, was strictly on Spotify. I believe I remember seeing it on Spotify when I was with this other company. And then when I switched to uh, Acast, I'm pretty sure at that point, that's when it disappeared. I don't know why, but that's basically what happened. When you look at Spotify, I'm not quite sure of other ones like Apple and stuff like that. But if you look at Spotify, go all the way down to my very first episode of the Pokemon K podcast. You'll see season one, episode two and three um, for, as the title. And that's going back to the original Pokemon TV series. Back then I reviewed each episode, uh, started doing that for season one and then decided going to season two of the podcast that I would just revamp the whole thing and go completely different. I had guests on uh, and then had a co-host and so on and so forth. So the start of season four on here is actually an old episode. This will be season four, episode two for the podcast. Uh, and this is all obviously brand new content. So we've got two stories today. Um, the first one is the 15 best Pokemon cards ever ranked from 99 base set all the way up to crown Zenith. The second one is the best Pokemon card packs to buy in 2023, and we're about to get them. I mean, we all know by now where to get Pokemon packs, but sometimes people don't. So we're gonna start with the 15 best Pokemon cards. Uh, They start with number 15, work their way all the way down to number one. Uh, Number 15 though is a strange one. Uh, With all the the hype that this freaking card has gone, I'm surprised it's not higher or actually, well, I'm, I'm glad that it's not higher. I'm glad that these guys um, who made this uh, article have actually got some common sense that just because a card is attached to a high profile name doesn't make it the absolute greatest card ever. Um, and thank God. So number 15 is the Illustrator Pikachu, the most expensive Pokemon card. Um, coming in at 15, obviously it's the most expensive card, uh, making it the best Pokemon card list would be impossible without mentioning the one of a kind PSA 10 illustrator card that the Logan Paul spent six million dollars on. I mean, overpriced? Yeah, I think so. Regardless of how many are in existence, come on, overpriced. Uh, With only 39 being distributed following a series of contests in the late 90s. um, Number 14 is the Commission Charizard Shadowless base set. Obviously, come on. I mean, can you really have a list without the base set Charizard? Uh, the first ever holographic Charizard is considered the Michael Jordan of Pokemon cards. It's not very flashy by today's standards, but many hail it as being the greatest card in, of all time. This is likely due to the nostalgia and rarity, and it features one of the most favorite Pokemon. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, people are fascinated with Mews and... Palkias and whatnot. So, I mean, I think we're slowly starting to move away from Charizard. I would hope so. Uh, Pokemon base set sits low on this list because it's not easily obtained without hundreds of thousands of dollars. Even then, it's arguably a rather underwhelming card. Nonetheless, this card's hype has earned it a spot among the greatest of all times. 13 is Shaman EX, the whole art. Uh, and they put in brackets, meta defining Pokemon card. Uh, During each new era of the Pokemon TCG, a few cards will veer from heads, veer their heads to dominate the meta. However, 
there hasn't been a card as meta-defining as Shaman EX during the era of Roaring Skies. It allowed players to fill their, fill their hands up with six cards when played, thanks to its ability to give players plenty of options, and a full art version of the card isn't too bad either. It's not necessarily as artistic or visually interesting as cards further down the list, but the sky form stands proudly against a blue background, striking fear into the opposing trainer. Number 12 is the Mega Mewtwo EX, the highest damage output. Many trainers are, are tribute or tribute, sorry, Mega Mewtwo EX from the XY Breakthrough expansion to be one of the strongest cards ever to grace the Pokemon TCG. This is thanks to its incredibly powerful move, Psychic Infinity. This attack does 10 damage, plus 30 more damage, times the amount of energy both you and your opponent have attached to their active Pokemon. And to make matters worse for your opponents, <laughs> the damage dealt isn't affected by weakness. With the right amount of energy, Mega Mewtwo EX could solo teams in the blink of an eye. I've done this. Uh, not necessarily with Mega Mewtwo, uh, but I do have cards in, at, well, back when I had multiple decks playing. I did have a very powerful card. I forget what the heck it was. Um, but basically, it allowed me to stack damage. Um, and it wasn't one of those stupid things where it's like, oh, you can attack, but then your next turn you can't attack. Uh, it was basically unleash damage. Pray to God that the next Pokemon that comes out on the, the player's side has at least one, maybe two energies if they stick down uh, the double colorless. It was a perfect setup. I mean, I one-shot decks completely left, right, and center. It was an amazing card. Uh, Arceus Diaga and Palkia GX from Cosmic Eclipse make number 11. Sun and Moon expansion offered quite a few team-up cards which featured two or more Pokemon in a single card. Not just in the artwork, but the card itself was actually representative of two Pokemon, which led to some really interesting combinations and incredible artwork. But one of the greatest cards to come out of this era of teamwork came from the final Sun and Moon set, Cosmic Eclipse. The trio card, Arceus, Diaga, and Palkia, uh, featured the gods of the Pokemon universe and while this Pokemon card wasn't the dominating force players would expect from a trio of gods, it's still one of the best Sun and Moon team-ups. Number 10, my favorite Pokemon, Gengar VMAX Alt Art Secret from Fusion Strike. Still don't have that card yet. I do have, act ooh, actually I might. I might actually have it. Or at least I have the regular VMAX. I think I have the regular VMAX graded, but... I mean, come on, can you have too many Gengars? <laughs> you may notice that the top 10 of this list are all from the Sword and Shield era of the Pokemon TCG and onward. No, and that's not by mistake. Since the start of 2020, the Pokemon company has produced some of the highest quality cards to date, and each set has contained multiple stunning collector pieces. To kick off the top 10, we have Gengar. They have a spelling mistake in here. They have Gengar with a D at the end. <laughs> Gengar VMAX's secret alt art from the Fusion Strike set. Not only is this card beautiful illustrated, but it also deals a devastating amount of damage. Yeah, it does. Uh, it's no wonder why this card clocks in at just under $200, making it the most expensive Pokemon card from the Fusion Strike set. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I haven't just flat out bought it. It's, it's expensive. The Tyranitar V Alt Art from Battle Styles comes in at number 9. Tyranitar is one of the most daunting Pokemon outside of the TCG, and seen as fair share of play inside the competitive card game as well. However, its Battle Styles alt, alt Art card shows a different side of the Gentle Giant. Slumbering against a pile of trash and dirty dishes, this napping behemoth quickly became one of the most haunted cards, hunted, sorry, cards in the set. But this powerful Pokemon card also packed a huge punch able to deal massive damage to a single blow at the expense of a few cards. Mew VMAX Alt Art from Fusion Strike comes in at number 8. Taking another stop in the land at Fusion Strike, Mew VMAX's Secret Alt Art is a stunning card both visually and in terms of its abilities. This is not to be confused with the five other Mew cards in this set, one of which has arguably a better Alt Art. The Mew VMAX is equipped with two of the most lucrative moves in the TCG. Cross Fusion Strike allows Mew to choose one attack from the trainer's bench Fusion Strike Pokemon and use it as its own. 
and Max Miracle deals 130 damage that isn't affected by any effects of the opponent's active Pokemon. It may not be the most effective or expensive card, sorry, but it is a force to be reckoned with. Number seven, we go back to the Lizard, Charizard, V-Star, but from the Ultra Premium Collection Box, the promo. And also at number seven, yeah, there's two of them, Mewtwo V-Star from Crown Zenith. Here's a Charizard that feels worthy of a spot on the, any best Pokemon card list. Charizard V-Star tells a phenomenal story of one of the most beloved Pokemon battling against the strongest of Pokemon. This battle can also be seen from Mewtwo's perspective in the new Crown Zenith set. The Mewtwo V-Star is the more appealing of the two, but its rarity makes it quite hard to pull and more expensive to purchase than the Charizard V-Star. Collectors can pay anywhere around $119 to purchase the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection Box to get three incredible Charizard cards, or they can pick up the V-Star on its own for around $20. Number six is the Origin Form Palkia V, or alternate full art, sorry, from Astral Radiance. Hmm. The Origin Form Palkia V alt art is one of the many recent cards to take the force of force focus off of the featured Pokemon in order to showcase the incredible artwork. This 2.4 by 3 inch masterpiece, why would they include that? I mean, we all know what size cards are. Uh, I mean, come on. It would be better suited as a framed poster or a full page in an, alt, in an art book. Origin Form Palkia fits perfectly among the best Pokemon cards in recent history. This card is top tier design wise and is a great way to introduce a new Pokemon, or in this case, a new form, to the TCG. And its attack, Hydro Break, deals a staggering 200 damage at the expense of being unable to attack the next turn. I mean, yeah, if you're going to deal 200 damage, uh, I mean, you might want to strategize on that because of the fact that you can't attack your next turn. So, ideally, you, you want to get set up quick so then you can attack your opponent's stronger Pokemon um, to, to kind of ensure that hopefully they can't attack and one-shot you the next turn um or at least swap out that pokemon for a secondary pokemon that's just as strong because then you're you're pretty much at the losing end of that battle um you need to really set yourself up in order to kind of progress the game in your favor so to speak number five as we round out the top 15 here is ombreon v max alt art from evolving skies I would love that, how uh, an evolution is in the top five. One of the most sought after cards in the peak of the Pokemon TCG online popularity was Ombreon VMAX's alt art. The giant evolution sits perched on top of a building, reaching out from the moon in one of the most poetic artworks to come out of the Pokemon TCG. It's hailed as the best Pokemon card in Evolving Skies. And for those who are brave enough to take on this miraculous card out, of, out for a scroll on the battlefield, Really? I mean, why would you use it for TCG battling? But okay. Its ability and attack are pretty nasty. Dark Signal allows a player to switch their opponent's active player for one of its benched, and Max Darkness can follow up with a powerful 160 damage. Number four is Reggie Draco V, the alt art from Silver Tempest. At the time of writing, the Pokemon TCG's Silver Tempest expansion hasn't been released yet but we're already being given a glimpse of one of the alt art cards that awaits players. Reggie Draco V easily secures a spot near the top of this list. Once again, a fierce legendary Pokemon is pictured in a serene setting, just chilling among the ruins as the legendary bird Lugia soars by the background. And as per usual, the most decadent cards are adorned with some of the best abilities. Celestial Roar has the player discard the top three cards from their deck. Careful of that. It, but if any of those three cards are energy, they are automatically attached to Reggie Draco. Ah, not bad. And a move like Dragon Laser that sp speaks for itself. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're going to use an attack, you might as well use an attack called Dragon Laser. That's just some, uh, that sounds, sounds scary. Number three, Deoxys VMAX Altart from Crown Zenith. When looking at the entire lineup of alt arts from the Crown 7 set, it's incredibly difficult to limit the number of cards from that set on this list. There are at least 10 cards from Crown 7 that could easily make this list, but there's 
one card that stands above the rest and is out of this world. Deoxys V Max Altart is the best Pokemon card from the Crown Santa set. Fight me on that. Yeah, they actually included that on here. <laughs> the extraterrestrial Pokemon is being abducted by Orbeetle <laughs> with a black backdrop that feels straight off a psychedelic sci-fi movie. It's gorgeous, it's stunning, and it's well worth the chase. Number two, Gervant. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to butcher this. Garvantia V. Altar? Oh, from Lost Argents. I'm sorry. God. I mean, look at this thing. It wouldn't be surprising if players were in the midst of the greatest era of Pokemon card designs, seeing what the most recent set, Lost Argents, has to offer. The, I'm not even going to attempt to name that again. Altar card is without a doubt the best single Pokemon card ever printed. You could call the, the Pokemon the Ferrari of Pokemon cards. Oh, really? Ferrari? Come on. Clearly, they like Ferrari over any other freaking company, but why Ferrari? Why are we bringing cars into this? It's Pokemon cards, not Pokemon cars. It is the strongest card, or is it the strongest card ever? No, but it does have an incredible kit that makes it makes the god of antimatter one of the formidable foe. Abyss Seeker allows the player to look at the top four cards of their deck and keep two of their two in their hand, while Shred is a pretty self-explanatory move that deals 160 unimaginated or unmigated, sorry, damage. And number one, the Creation Trio and RCS V-Star Ultra Rare Altart from V-Star Universe. Yeah, we have a Japanese card. After the re or after the previous Altart V was revealed, we didn't expect it to be dethroned so soon. But as more cards from for the upcoming V-Star Universe set are revealed, the top spot now belongs to not one, but four cards. If you ever wondered what it would feel like to hold a masterful piece of art in your hand, look no further than the Origin Form Pakia, Origin Form Diaga, Gervantia, oh my god, I'm sorry, and RCS V-Star, uh, ultra rare cards from V-Star Universe are the most gorgeous Pokemon cards ever printed. It's almost as if you're looking at Renaissance paintings that belong in a museum. They are also the final four cards to release during the Sword and Shield era of the Pokemon TCG. And they are in the perfect way to end a breathtaking run of cards. And with that, that is the end of God that story. We're going to move on to the best Pokemon cards, or sorry, the best Pokemon packs to buy in 2023. And where to actually get them. And finally, the best Pokemon card packs to buy in 2023. Coming in at the top is Crown Zenith, of course. <clears throat> the latest high class packs releases on January 20th, 2023. Next week, guys. Woo, so close. Crown Zenith is the international adaptation of the Japanese V Star universe, but it doesn't release until the 20th. Regardless, this is a set that needs to be on every collector's radar. That's because this is yet another high class set, meaning every pack guarantees at least one V, V Max, or V Star pull. And if history repeats, repeats itself, these packs could include the chance of obtaining a God pack. It's about a 1 in 600 chance. Uh, but every card in God pack is a hollow or better. This also means that packs, elite trainer boxes, and booster boxes will be flying off the shelves, and pre orders will likely sell out as well. This, this is one of one set you won't want to miss because the artwork is some of the best in recent history. There are over 160 cards and 70 special art cards and top on top of the 11 shiny Pokemon that could be found in the set. Okay, so we're going back to shinies. I mean, as long as it's not like... If we're going to do like Radiant shinies, then that's okay. Um, but if we go back to actual like baby shinies then I, I mean i think that ship has sailed right i mean what do you guys think next is silver tempest okay. silver tempest released on the 11th of november and secret rare alt arts and full art trainer cards or trainer gallery cards make it a well worth collecting there are 30 new trainer gallery cards three new radiant cards or shiny pokemon okay so that's what they classify as shiny pokemon uh, and some incredible alt art. The chase cards are already mounting as Reggie Draco V and Unknown V have captured the attention of avid collectors. These packs can be pre-ordered via hobby shops 
and will start appearing in the wild in stores like Target, Walmart, GameStop, Walgreens, Dollar General in the US. Uh, pretty much the same thing here in Canada, just not Dollar General, obviously, or Walgreens or a Target, because <laughs> that ship sank very quickly. Uh, we went from Zellers to Target, and both of those sank. <laughs> so, um, although, I don't know why people do this in their articles that they make. They're talking about how, like, it, it sounds like, like November 11th hasn't come and passed. Yet, they created this article in the beginning of January of, of this year. So, I mean, why are you saying, oh, you can pre-order it when it's been out for a couple months now? I mean, you can go anywhere and get Silver Tempest. I mean, heck, I saw a ton of it at my Walmart the last couple of days. Uh, as a rule of thumb, it's safe to assure that new sets going forward are worth picking up, unless the Scarlet and Violet base set turns out to be underwhelming as Sword and Shields was. We'll have to wait and see how those sets shape up in 2023. Uh, I mean, yeah. At the same time, it's kind of cool to collect the base set of any new set. Um, I like to collect sets, certain sets, uh, usually based on artwork. Uh, so. I mean, yeah, sometimes it's nice to start with the actual base set. The next one is Astral Radiance, Brilliant Stars, and Lost Origins. Basically, decent pulls for a fair price. That's very true. In 2022, the Pokemon Company released three Sword and Shield TCG expansions, and they're all some of the best Pokemon cards, card packs on the market. Starting with Brilliant Stars, the TCG reintroduced Trainer Gallery cards, which features a trainer alongside the Pokemon. These can be found in the reverse hollow slot, giving collectors an extra shot at a hit with each pack. These are available in all three sets mentioned, and they also feature some of the best alt artworks in the entire TCG. Not to mention, these sets can regularly be found at any retail that stocks licensed Pokemon cards, meaning you don't have to rely on secondhand sellers to start collecting. It's only a matter of which cards you want to chase more. You can purchase these packs right now via Amazon or basically any store. Next is Shining Fates, Hidden Fates, and more. A collection. <laughs> eh, really? One of the best feelings when opening Pokemon is seeing a nice shiny holographic at the end of the stack. And with Pokemon TCG's Fates expansion, you can get that in every pack. Both of these, se both of these sets are jam-packed with shiny Pokemon and incredible trainer cards. And there's even a chance at opening a God Pack where every card inside is a holo. Not to mention, every pack offers a guaranteed hollow or better, making them worth a pr the price of admission. However, these packs have grown to be quite expensive as they are a few years old and rarely seen in stores. That's true. Uh, this means you'll likely need to buy Pokemon Fates packs from a third party. That being said, the latest high class set, Crown Seneth, releases this month and offers more high value cards than ever before. Next up is Fusion Strike. Evolving Skies, and Chilling Rain. Good luck on those chase cards. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Finally, you have some really solid Sword and Shield expansions, if you can find them. Uh, Fusion Strike, Evolving Skies, and Chilling Rain were released in 2021. During the massive resurgence of TCG collecting and some of the chase cards in these sets are the best as seen in the best Pokemon cards of all time guide. These are arguably the best Pokemon card packs if you can still find them. Luckily, these turn, these turn up quite frequently in tins or as single packs in stores like Dollar General and Walgreens. The seeding for these packs doesn't feel as great as the newer sets, but there are some still immaculate cards within the set that makes them worth picking up. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's true. I mean, uh, you do have some of the, uh, I mean, if I had to pick between those three sets, uh, from t high to low, I would probably go Fusion Strike, Evolving Skies, Chilling Rain. Chilling Rain, I, I I did collect it for a while. I think I got like the majority of the way through the set. Um, but it's really not that great of a set. Yeah, there's a couple chase cards, but but that's about it. Uh, other than that, I mean, Fusion Strike has the beautiful alt arts. Uh, so does Evolving Skies with the evolutions. But yeah, other than that, I mean, those three sets, you know, I, I would have to lean more towards Fusion Strike 
and then evolving skies and then basically chilling rains going to my kids for their collection essentially um that's just that's just unfortunately how i would put it but prove me wrong comment down below on this video here um or if you listen to the podcast send me an email tell me i'm wrong i'd love a good debate <laughs> why not and with that being said we say thank you for three incredible seasons of the pokemon k podcast here to season four a new year 2023 we are at the beginning of january now uh i mean let's see where this year takes us uh next up on the radar i want to do a little bit more with this room uh, my recording studio that i'm currently in uh first things first is this desk needs to be updated this is very old i mean this desk in particular uh i had when i was oh god i was really young 10 12 no about 10 10 years old is when i had this desk so that's over 20 years ago <laughs> yeah i'm i'm old ish <laughs> i feel old um so yeah definitely need to upgrade the desk um the only downside is i'm limited on space wise because i mean i don't have very much room between this wall and that wall um i think even like a 42 inch desk is really really pushing it and in order to do that it actually has to be like 42 inches on the top but maybe 39 inches near the bottom like the legs have to be in further than what the actual desk is uh, just because I have trim on the bottom uh, and I really don't want to cut the trim out just for legs of a desk so unfortunately uh, so yeah that's that's the main priority upgrade this desk whether I build one custom kind of thing who knows uh, next is start streaming again on Twitch um, start with the PlayStation 4 stuff move into switch games like uh, Pokemon and, and stuff like that um, yeah trying to work on that also I want to upgrade uh, audio for the podcast um, I mean I, I love this mic that I'm using it's an amazing amazing mic but it's a USB mic uh, so you are very limited on what you can do with it you can't plug it into a mixer because uh, mixers don't support USB uh, mics uh, but I want to get a mixer speaking of that uh, or a program that doesn't cost an arm and a leg to have so then I can remote record with people uh, that way it doesn't sound like complete dumpster trash when we have a podcast with someone on who isn't physically in this room um, a lot of the times I try and get guests who are on the other side of the province the country or the world so you know everyone can't be in here and actually in fact it's incredibly hard to have somebody in this room because it's not very wide uh it's literally a one-man show in here that's that's about it but <laughs> enough of that thank you so much for listening for watching and i will see you next time take care everyone